because we're talking about food. So um, you grew up on the farm. Yes, I did. I was born and raised, lived all my entire life except for the last four years. And that farm was located where? My, where I was born and raised is 12 miles southwest of Strasburg. Okay, beautiful country down there. Yes, it is. So, how important was it that you guys grew or produced your own food on the well, farm? It was our survival. We, we just, like I said, we, we didn't know what there was to go to town because we didn't have the, the first snowfall, the roads were closed because there weren't any decent roads. They were all trails, actually, is what they were. And so the first snowfall, why we didn't get to town maybe for six weeks at a time. So in the fall, well, my mother grew everything. We grew everything we could eat, produce, we planted, and my mom canned a lot. So tell me some of the things that you grew in your garden. Well, everything, the potatoes, cabbage, pota uh, tomatoes, carrots, peas, beans, um, pumpkins, well, squash. We weren't too familiar with squash at that time. It was basically your pumpkins. Mm -hmm. And she cut them up, and we didn't really make like we do now, like we use sweet potatoes we make now, or squash like sweet potatoes. All she used then was for placenta. And that is, tell me what, tell me how she made her placenta, because okay. we always like to know. <laughs> well, like I said, I don't know the recipe by heart. It was with dough and cream and I think some baking powder, eggs, your common basic dough. And we rolled it out, and she just put in she put a little salt and pepper and on, in her on her pumpkin. That was rubbed by hand, though it wasn't ground or anything. We had to rub it by hand. So you rubbed the pumpkin by yes. hand? Yes. Yes. We cut it in half, took the seeds out, and then we sat with a uh, with a tablespoon and we scraped them pumpkins. That's all I knew how to do it. I didn't know no other way. And so then she would just put a little salt and pepper on there, and she took the dough, rolled it out lengthways, put a half, half filled it half with a pumpkin, and then we put sugar on, sprinkled sugar on it, sealed it up, and baked it. And did you eat them for dessert? Those were kind of a dessert well, or not? Not so much when I was growing up. I because at that time my mom did a lot of baking already, like cookies and kuchen and things like that. that's just we had uh, cakes we had this with bean soup really and tell me how you made your bean soup well she took your pork uh, when she baked the ham she kept that bone and she left a little bit of meat on the bone and she added water to it and boiled it with threw a little onion in there and and boiled that and then when the, it was soft they had her brought cooked the, the bone meat out left a little bit of meat in or whatever and then she peeled potatoes cubed them and boiled them until they were pretty much soft. Well, then she had beans. I now, as I was, she used pork and beans. They were out at that time. So we used pork and beans. But when she was growing up, they had kidney beans. And they bought them in bags, I guess, and soaked them overnight and pre-boiled them and threw them in for bean soup. That's interesting. No, I'm nobody. Um, they didn't grow beans, dry no, beans, maybe. No, I don't think they. I, I didn't know. I think the beans only started uh, after we were married. Our neighbor grew beans, and I still got some beans down at the farm. Like I said, I've. Got, he gave us well, we could, for maybe a dollar, we had twenty pounds of beans wow. from him, and so I made my own pork and beans then. So then you mentioned that you didn't get to town. Where would the closest grocery store have been? It was in Strasburg. We had a grocery okay. store. It was known as Craft Store, and they had a grocery store there. And then we also had another grocery store. We had two, actually. It was Voller's and Crafts, and they were family-owned, both of them. And Voller's also had a, a meat where they processed their own meat in the back that you could... if. People brought some meat in, I guess. We didn't, but I think they did. They kind of had a locker in the back and also sold grocery. And then, uh, like, my dad would go, uh, when my dad would go into town in the fall, and he would go to town, and he bought, like, 800 pounds of flour. He got the 100-pound flour bags at that time, which make nice dish towels. And uh, we filled them. We filled them up with, he brought about eight of those home, 800 pounds, and about 100 pounds of sugar, and or and about 25 pounds of salt, and that was about it. And Where did you store that? 
Well, we had a three-story house. We had a basement, and we also had a fall uh, uh, root cellar. We also had a main floor, and we had an upstairs. And we took one room, and that was just a storage room, and it wasn't heated, but it had enough from the house, the heat from the other place, and he put everything upstairs. So what did you keep then? It, you kept flour and stuff in the upstairs, upstairs but then in the root cellar you kept... Had the canned goods. We had we had the red, red green crocs, the uh, earthen crocs. The biggest one was 20 gallons. That's where we had filled with uh, uh, watermelon. Whole watermelons, pickled watermelons. Oh, pick, whole pickled, pickled watermelons. watermelons. Yes, we filled in the fall. They grew what they called, they were... They had a, the name form, and um, I I can't remember what they really called them, but they were white shell, kinda, and um, they had a, a certain name. It was was it, they called it a watermelon, but it really I don't think it was. But it was like it had flesh and everything, but mm -hmm. they didn't get as ripe as a watermelon. They were more like a pinkish, and they had white shell, and then they filled that up in the fall, and then. And that's, we ate them, they lasted till in July. They kept really well down in the base. It was a rind of just uh, water with salt, pickling spices, pepper, and, uh, and then they would, and dill, a lot of dill. She would put a watermelon and dill and watermelon, she filled that up, and then she just added like you do your, when you pickled your watermelon, they used the same kind of rind, and they pulled it over, or poured it over, and they weighed it down. And then that, they kept, well, about a month they were ready to eat, or two months they were ready to eat. Mom had the one, two, and I think a five, and then is it a two or two gallon was the smallest, I think, two gallon. Well, no, she had a gallon one because in the summertime she would just pick the bigger, the bigger cucumbers she would pick. We would just pickle them in a crock. And then after three, four days, you could go and eat them. They were ready to eat, and we would, every time we'd have to go down to the cellar and get something, we'd stop by, pick out our, water, our cucumber and eat it. And then in the fall, she filled one with sauerkraut, one with tomatoes, and one with uh, watermelon. Okay, so tell me how the, t uh, I know how the watermelon works, that was pickled, and the sauerkraut is pickled, but the tomatoes, yep. just the, like, green ones or red ones? Well, or? they were just the pinkish ones, kind of. So would, they were on the verge of getting ripe. Right, not. and then those, you, they didn't keep very long, you know. Okay. They would get mushy, you had to eat them, but... They were pickled the same as watermelon. Oh, they were pickled? Yeah, they, yeah she put them in a crock and the same as the watermelon. So and then, then did your she mother have a pressure can or just, just the hot them. water bath yes, can. She never owned a pressure canner until the late, late years. I was gone from home already. Okay. When they came out, I don't think there were pressure one. cans. I had, uh, when I was I, well, I bought my mother's then. Uh, when she passed away, I dad didn't use it anymore, so I bought it and I used it because I can't fish and stuff like that and uh, and that's why they bought one then too because fish had were supposed to be pressure kept cooked in order to keep them I guess and that's why they bought it but were she, they pickled fish like herring or well no you can just put them in a jar and then you could just kind of put I've got the recipes but I mean I don't know by heart because it's been so many years since I've done it but I know we made she made ketchup fish she can with ketchup sauce on them, and they were just about like those that you buy now, and you buy your salmon in cans, that's the way these canned fish were. And who did the fishing in your family? My dad. And w is and there a place down there? Well, we had it 10 miles to the river. Oh, that's right. We lived about 10 miles, 10, 11 miles east of, east of the river. And so when May, after spring's work was done, in between spring's work and haying, there was a little bit of playtime there, so he uh, got and we set line. He set line, fishing lines in there, and they had each had about ten lines in there. Each one had about ten hooks on there, and so after chores were done in the morning, that was our routine. Then for about two weeks, every morning we, Dad, I, and my older brother and my other brother, had a ride with him down to the river, and he pulled out all the lines, and we. Had, took all the fish off that we had, and then he rebated them and threw them back in until the next morning. And we had to come home and we had to clean fish. That was our daily chores for two weeks after the regular chores were done. <laughs>
<laughs> so then you must have had cows. So you must have had the milk mm -hmm. in the morning, mm -hmm. in the night, and mm -hmm. do the fish in between. Mm -hmm. We got up in the morning, we milked and took care of the milk, the cows, and separated. And the, some of them went and fed the pigs so after the boys got older. They went and fed the pigs while we were doing other chickens. And then we had to go down to the river and do our fishing for the day. And we come home and we had to clean the fish. And that's when my mom got recipes for for canning fish or well, she made them. And by then we had freezer, so she put them in the freezer. They, they canned, preserved everything. But the they younger could. years when because I was that, younger, we had no. a root cellar, so she could put everything down there. Like I said, she can't chicken, she can't beef, she can't sausage, she can't, well, that's the only way we could preserve it was canned. So how did you boil the water? I mean, did you have a wood stove? This was before electricity, right? Right. Yeah, we had, well, she had a cook stove, and then we had a kerosene stove. Okay. And we had a two-burner kerosene stove in the basement. The basement was stuck, well, I, I don't remember when my dad dug at the basement or the cellar. That was done already when I was really young. That's one of the first things my dad did when he bought the farm, I think. And the farm belonged to my grandpa and grandma, Nagel. And they came over from Russia and homesteaded. Right. Yep. They, well, they homesteaded over in, uh, at Wishik first. They were in Wishik. I don't know for how many, out at the Rosenthal area. I don't, I don't remember any of that time. That was the way, you know, my dad's, before my dad's time. But that was the understanding that... They came, and they landed in, came through New York and came to Eureka, and that's where they took the trip, and they came north. And they homesteaded out in, they called it the Rosenthal area. And he was there, I don't know exactly how many years, but then he bought this farm in Emmons County and settled it there. He settled there. And that's where my dad was raised, and I was raised, all on the same farm. And then when you got married, you stayed on that farm? No. When I got married, then I moved to north of Hazleton. That's where my husband's home farm was. His folks. He was an only son, and he had one sister. And he stayed, he, he, we stayed there. When we got married, we took the farm over from his folks. And his parents remained on the farm on with On the you farm guys. with us. And yes, his dad, when his dad passed away, his mom stayed there until nine, uh, 2000 and... 2003 is when she moved and um, so then I, I had we lived in the trailer house so I stayed there I said I'm not dragging everything out of here just to move over to the house that so my son stayed there on weekends and he worked during the week and he come home every weekend he came home Thursday nights left Sunday nights and so he stayed in there, and then, well, then he got transferred to South Dakota. And that's when you moved up here? And that's when I moved up here, yes. But all the married years, while we were married, I lived in it. We lived in the trailer, and his folks lived in the house. Okay, so when you were growing up, you guys had a big garden. And tell me again, what was all in the garden? And what was in the garden was potatoes, pumpkins, onions, tomatoes, carrots, peas, beans and cabbage basically. And so then when you got married, now did you garden with your mother-in-law? No, we both had our separate gardens. We had, they made the garden bigger. <laughs> we had it side by side so we could both water it, but we each had our separate garden. She planted hers, I planted mine, and, and then as she uh, advanced in age, she just kind of quit. And then I took over the whole garden and I that's, I planted everything I could get my hands on. <laughs> so then you said you could water your garden, but when you were growing up, like on your farm, and you didn't have running water, no. how did you water your garden? Okay, my then? dad went, and he would uh, dig uh, trenches between the rows, and we'd fill uh, water. We had He had a, like a, a tank, and he put water in there, and then he went along, and he, we just poured it in the rows. Did you get it from the river or from no, the well? No, from the well. We had a, a regular well that we watered the cattle from, and we had it carried into the house from there. And so for wash day, you carried water into the mm -hmm. house? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We had it carried in, but by the time I really got old enough that I had to do that, my dad put a well right behind the house, and he had, and we had the well right, a well in the basement. And it would then, and then, like I said, he had a motor on there that it would start, and by that time we had electricity then. That's when the electricity came in, and like I said, it was in the late 
early 50s, I think like 52, 53 is when we got electricity. Did you always hang the laundry out or oh, did you have yes. a dryer? No. My mom never had a dryer. I don't think she ever had a dryer until she moved to town. She hung it out. She had thin little gloves that she put on so she could handle the clothes. She'd hang them all out and they were froze rock hard sometimes. She'd bring them in. You could just set everything on the floor and it stood up there like a statue. It was froze and then it would thaw out. And then she had lines in one of the kitchens because we had two kitchens. One where we had just cooked in there and had our cupboard in there. And then we had a smaller one. And that's where the, just the table was sitting in there where we just ate. But she would string lines then, and then she, as the clothes thawed out, she hung them over and finished drying them. And then the later years, she, um, after some, if it was really, really cold, she didn't. We had lines in the basement, and then she washed them, and we just hung them over the lines in the basement and left them dry down there. Did you have a summer kitchen? Yes, we did. Tell me, what did you do in the summer kitchen? Well, that was just like what you, your modern people nowadays would say cabin. You know, it's just like it was a summer cabin. We call it the summer kitchen, and it was just basically one big room. And then when it got really nice, and she had a kerosene stove in there, and a table, and a cupboard, and uh, we uh, got nice. She would move over there, and she would cook, and we'd eat over there. And that the way, the house stayed cooler. It didn't get so hot in the house because you know the heat was shut off, and we shut everything off. And then we would just uh, go over there and we'd eat, she'd go over there and had a kerosene stove and we cooked on that and she had an oven on that kerosene stove that she could even bake bread in there. So did you have a certain day that you did bread baking? Not really. She just basically, she just about sometimes had to do it twice a week. Depends on how much we would use, you know, and because we couldn't store it, it'd get moldy. So then we would just, uh, she would bake and stuff, but so we'd get it eaten out before it would get moldy. You know, and then so she sometimes have to bake. She baked on a Monday. She usually baked on a Friday. Friday was basically a pretty much the baking day because she would make rolls or kuchen and fried bread because we couldn't eat meat. That's right. We were talking about fry bread. And uh, tell me what you call it again in German. Ausgezogene Kiesle. And you ate that just plain, or did you put something on well, it? Or I yeah, we did. Um, my mom just took plain sugar and she put it in a pie tin and she stretched the dough and she dipped it on both sides in the sugar and she put it in the deep of deep in the fat and she fried it and it came out like a glazed. It was sweet then. And that's when I liked sauerkraut on top of that. Oh, no. did, what's the word for veggie noodle? There we go. We make veggie noodle and then I ate we some of us ate sauerkraut with them, some ate them plain, but I like them with sauerkraut because the sweetness and the my own sourness the just really but I guess it, I'm kind of lazy. I didn't do it this year. <laughs> so how? Tell me what's all in them, like recipe-wise. It's flour. all it is is eggs, flour, and water, and I think is it a fourth or a half a teaspoon of salt, and that's all it is. And you just, it's really hard though. You got to work it really hard. It gets to be a tough dough because I think you add three to eight tablespoons. So I've, I have a recipe. I don't know it really by heart, but roughly I think it was. Four cups of flour, eight eggs, and eight tablespoons of water, and uh, I think a half a teaspoon of salt. But you just mix that all together, and you really work it till it's all worked up like to a dough. And then what I uh, then my mom would take it and on the table. She put flour and she rolled it out. It was really thin. She rolled it all with she I mean, some, sometimes she had it as big as half of this table. She had it, and then she took it and laid it on the bed, laid dish towels down, and laid that dough on there and left it dry. So, I mean, not completely dry, dry, or else it would have broke all up. And she let it dry, and then she would roll it up, just flip the dough over, and then she sliced it really thin, and then she fluffed that all up. She laid it back on the bed and left it lay like a day or so, so they got really hard, because then they would keep. They would keep for a long, long time. And then she would just put them in in um, jars or whatever, or ba uh, I don't know what she actually even put them in, but I think, and sometimes she would just make enough for two meals, you know, roll it out, one, one, just make one pat patty or whatever. And uh, she'd lay, it. my mother-in-law, she hung it over the chair. <laughs> 
she put the towel underneath and the dish towel and she just made a big round cake. It was just big round and just flipped it over the chair. She hung it there for a half hour, turned it over for another half hour. Oh, well, now it was ready to cut, take it off, roll it up and sliced it, you know. See, now, I do it different because I've got a machine now. I bought a machine. I bought it at a rummage sale for eight dollars, and wow. and uh, that actually rolls it out really thin. For right. Anything, right. So you don't. Have, it's a lot of arm, less arm work. So what I do then is I just took little balls about this size thick, roll them a little bit in flour, and then you roll them through once, and you lay them down, let them dry for well. I make usually two batches at one time, and then I roll one batch through, lay it out, roll the other batch through. By that time, that's a little dry enough, so I roll it again, then it gets really thin. And then I just let it lay a little bit, and then it's just so that you can cut them nice. And then you've got another uh, a cutter in the back. And mine has, makes two. Mine makes the white noodles, and they call it spaghetti noodles. You can make the really thinner ones. And so then you run it through, and it cuts them up for you right away. Did you do the, those were the noodles that you used in noodle soup when you made noodle soup? Well, they used them, they, at that time, when they, what they cut them, they cut them thin, and they used them for, like you say, for your chnitna noodle and for soup. They were used both ways, because, you know, they didn't have anything else to cut them thinner. But now I can, was the ones I can cut, I could use them for noodle soup, the thin ones. But I... I just use the white ones. I like white ones too, so I just make the one kind. That way I've got it. I just put them in. Now what I do is I put them in Tupperware and keep them, and they keep, I can keep them over six months. So when the they didn't have Tupperware or aluminum foil back then, Well, they, they? I think what they did at that time, my mom would just make enough for two meals. You know, there was six, seven, eight of us, oh. so she needed one cake, you know, or we call them, you know, a round cake. You know, they, I'd say they were about this big around. And then she dried it and cut it. Well, for the time eight people ate, well, what was left over, we ate for for them, or had them for supper and had them for the next day, or whatever. So did you go to school? Yes, I did. What did you take for lunch at school, or did you come home? Jelly and bread. <laughs> Jelly bread and homemade sausage. Oh gosh, cold sausage, right? Yeah. Just... Well, we cooked sausage. My mom, we had we had sausage for breakfast every morning, with our cooked wheat, or cream of wheat, or oatmeal. You know, I mean, uh, we didn't have cold cereal when I was growing because there, there was no such a thing as Cheerios and cornflakes. So we always, that was our breakfast. We had bread and sausage. We had milk and my dad had coffee and mom and us kids had milk. And jelly came from? The Chuck Cherries. <laughs> oh man, that was a chore. <laughs> Oh. Did you have to pick, I suppose? Yes, and we had a lot of chook cherry trees at the farm. My my grandpa, he had he liked trees, so we had chook cherry trees. And when August rolled around, the the umbrella came out, the big tractor umbrella, and we'd slide them underneath the trees, and we just picked right into the umbrellas. And when we were all done, well, Mom dumped them in five gallon pails. After we had four or five gallon pails full, we had enough for one batch. <laughs> so we had to take them in and then we washed them, put them in a tub and put water and washed them all, put them in a boiler and then mom would put them on the, cook them on the, in a big the boiler that we used to cook our pork meat up when we canned it or make sausage with. She put it in there and she cooked it for maybe a day till she had them all cooked. And then she sat down and she had a colander and um, her big enamel pan, dish pan, and she just rubbed them all through by hand. And she rubbed all those through, and then she had to put everything back in the boiler, added her sugar, and boiled that till it got to spread in consistency. And then she put it in jars. Put it all in jars and put wax, melted wax, put wax on top. Did you and make wine shut them in the basin. I, my dad did, but not too often, and now we never did. After we got married, we never did, because they never really had the choke cherries up at this farm like we had down home, and we had more June berries, where we could go pick June berries. We, like, we have, uh, we have, we had a ravine on one of the quarters of the land, and they grew wild. The June berries were wild, and then our neighbors, they had some, and they would let us pick, and then we would pick June berries, and then we would go down to the river and we'd find the wild grapes 
and we picked those. Those what that's where I made jelly out of was out of wild grapes and chewing berries. I did have choke cherry. We had one then the later years, but we would get enough to make some. And I sometimes went down and got some choke cherries from my folks, you know, and stuff. And I cooked some. But I used to cook. Uh, I like I said, I had chewing berries and I had choke cherry and I cooked grapes. I had all that stuff. I made that when after we were married already. I would make that kind of jelly and stuff. So now I'm gonna I'm gonna backtrack just a little bit. I want when you said you butchered, you butchered three three hogs in a day. A lot of time, yes. When we were at home, we did because we couldn't butcher any hog. That was for the whole year then. So you got to understand, you know, there was no freezers. So then my mom, like I said, the pork we basically ate up over the winter months. Okay, but you also tell me about storing it in the barrels, the pork you actually Oh, yeah, had. they would just take, like the hams, the hams took the long, so they put all the hams in the bottom, and then they would put put the, the side pork on top of that, and then they would put your bone meat on top, because that was done the fast, because it was just like chunks of bone meat, you know, with meat on them. So then that was put on top, and then when they made the Ryan, you know, which was made out of, like I said, salt and pepper, water, pickling spices, and garlic. They mixed that and made it really salty. And I was learned, and that's how my mom did it. What that's where I picked it up from. She put an egg in, and when the egg came up and was swim, then the water was salty enough for the meat. So that's how we knew it was salty enough, and that's what I went by. And so we poured that over the meat, and that's it sat out in the garage. There was no heat, and it got cold in the winter time. It was cold. Sometimes it froze. It froze up. I mean, but it wouldn't freeze as hard because of the salt, you know, it didn't freeze that hard. The salt kept it from really freezing hard. But my dad would take one of the iron bars that they take tires off when they fix tires, and he would pry some of the meat loose and bring it in, and then we'd make the bone meat. And, well, then after a while, well, now I think it's in the, ch the side pork. And, well, towards spring, when it got to be the end of March, first part of April, what wasn't eaten up over the winter, he took that all out of the barrel, and then he smoked it. Interesting. And it was just like you buy your hams. It was half done. You know, it was smoked. And then they kept it in there because it was dark and it was all mud. It was all made out of mud and it was all enclosed. And so they could just leave it hang in there for at least till, till June. And by that time we'd bring it in and then we'd put it in the base, in the cellar and down there or whatever. We ate. By that time we basically had it eaten up, you know. And the beef, she canned most of it. That was all canned. And the then ribs. the and, and then, then she the, canned the sausage, she canned the beer, the ribs, the pork ribs, she canned that, that was canned. Tell me about making sausage. Do you remember how that was done? Yeah, because you I, made a lot of sausage. I right? made sausage until I quit until we quit and about what well, we made deer sausage. We didn't really make pork sausage that much anymore, but we made deer sausage the later years here. We made deer sausage once the deer started coming out of the river bottom and start moving around more. Then uh, we made deer sausage in later years, but basically we used the same as pork sausage. Only what they did there, they used pork and then they added so much beef to it. And then they measured out, and then what they did, they added salt and pepper, garlic, water, and uh, they mixed it. It was just salt, yeah, it was just salt, pepper, and garlic water, and then we mixed it really well. Then we'd take a little bit and we fried it to see if it had enough seasoning. If it didn't, well, it needs a little bit more. So we added a little bit more. There was no measurement there. And I, you know, that's something that I don't think I can ever give to anybody because it was just poured in by, you know. Did you grow your own garlic? Yes. Yes. I did. And I, I did up until I quit gardening. And saving seed. Did you say, do you remember anything about saving garden seed? Where would you get garden seeds from in the first place? Like when you were... You know what? Up? I think garden seeds came out already. I don't remember how my mom made. Like the pumpkins, she kept her seeds from her own pumpkins. And I know like tomatoes, if they were really nice, they would take the seeds out, out of the tomatoes. See, now the spawn ones I don't think would work anymore because they they got too much chemical or whatever, preservative. But my mom, she'd take one and she'd get really ripe so it got really mushy. And then she took it and squeezed it into a strainer and she ran water over it and she kind of got all that off. And then she laid it on a piece of paper and left the seeds dry. And then she just kind of peeled them off and put them in a, a little 
cheesecloth or something, tied it shut, and that was her seat. That's what she went with by next year. She took about two tomatoes and made the seed out of that. Just got them really, really ripe, so the seeds were ripe. And the garlic, we just kept the toes of garlic in the spring. We broke them apart to little pieces, and we just planted those. And the onion sets, now that I... I, she bought those. I don't know how they made them years ago. That I don't remember. I know she bought, ever since I could remember, she always bought the seeds. And you said when you went to town, which wasn't very often, you went to which two, two grocery stores in It was Strasburg? Dr. Crafts. Crafts and Vollers were the two grocery stores that I remember. Is there still a grocery store in Strasburg? Yeah, it's co-op, I think, isn't it? 